what's up guys how's everybody doing out there uh we're uh we're uh, andy's actually getting getting rolling nice andy i see what you're doing on here like doing that uh it, andy totally got it like what i was going to go for today i i wanted to um you know on, on the concept side kind of explore like putting something like i did last time we did like a forest kind of scene last time we put a bunch of cool characters in the in the forest and stuff like that this one is going to be actually this is a picture from mars so that's like the mars rover uh tracks that are going back in the distance i i can't, i think this might be a picture that's composited from multiple things i can't remember exactly but uh but i was totally thinking of like a dune landscape and that kind of a thing you know conceptually and uh, andy picked up on that and started started diving right in which is awesome um so that's what i want to kind of uh, go over today just do and just have some fun with you guys and start start painting into this environment one of the interesting things about this kind of an environment and what you're doing here is that this is uh you know it's it's very uh, color wise and value wise it's very interesting somewhere like mars and mars actually has a lot of dust storms and things like that it's really fascinating to to think about it but um but uh, but there is like, and you can see like a lot of that, it, you know, like that aerial perspective or like, um, you know, like the, as things get lighter in the distance, you know, that that's definitely going to happen. There's going to be like that, that dust storm sort of aspect to it, but it has a very monochromatic feel. Right. And so you're, you're not going to see like neon pinks on Mars and different things like that. So what happens if the sky is looking this way if the environment is looking this way and you introduce something that has you know a color on here or whatever it's an interesting concept and it's it's also like so there's that side of it like the 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 color and the the value and sort of the environment side um but you know but the other thing i want you guys to think about is and and i was thinking of a dune sort of environment too andy so this is like i said this is awesome but what else do people have in dune right they've got stuff like on their faces like to be able to block out the sandstorms or like you know be able to breathe properly or, or different things like that let's try to make some stuff on here that that would kind of sit and exist in this environment and uh um uh, yeah you can make it a little smaller and yeah make it a little smaller so we can so we can fit well we'll, we'll definitely I'll, i'm gonna put one of those in too i think that'd be cool too i'll put one in the background um but but think about like what kind of what kind of tech or what kind of creature would exist in this sort of environment and uh and you know um kind of come at it from that that angle and uh, it's really fun like when you start thinking that way conceptually like when you're having to design something or make something it, it needs to ring true it needs to be sort of usable right and so you could you could you know put a lot of different things you, you know in here and a lot of like really kind of push the boundaries but what's really going to resonate with the viewer if you're designing something is something that makes sense to be used in this environment and stuff like that so you know if you're drawing some kind of structure what would the structure be right you might have like a like a some sort of evaporator or something you know almost like on star wars or whatever like the dew farms or whatever you know that kind of thing because like on tatooine you would need you would need uh you know something like that right because there's not very much moisture and stuff like that so anyways think about those concepts as we as we kind of move forward let you know like think about that think about what would fit in the environment and andy's already doing that here andy's already doing that slightly like with um you know the color scheme different things like that we have a lot of reference here that you can pull from too right look at these structures here you can see like where the lighting is coming from very very clear indication of where the lighting is coming from from that direction like that right um you can see like general general values you know like it's a pretty harsh light as well um you know even though it looks like the you know atmosphere isn't super clear it's a it's still a pretty harsh light still pretty uh clear light and dark so anyways so let's uh let's get rolling with that let's let's start uh start moving on this and this is going to be fun this is going to be fun I'm, I'm i'm excited to uh to do this kind of thing i love dune so much i think it's like super cool um and uh and uh, and so like like i said i wanted to and i was looking at i was looking at some some stuff like uh some nasa stuff and so i thought oh man we should do that today that'd be fun um so i'm gonna put something in the back when i'm when i'm working on um something uh like this like i tend to think about like if it's an environment like this i tend to think about things in terms of the foreground the midground, and the background and have a very clear indication of all those things like i probably if this was a painting rather than a photo I'd be even, I'd be making this a little bit more pronounced. Like this would probably be a little bit lighter. You know, this, like I'd have it really, really be very, very clear that there's, there's a foreground, midground, a background. So a lot of these darker values I'd have up front 
you know, I'd be using these types of things. So Andy, if you're right here in the front, you could use probably, I think it would be okay compositionally to kind of use that, uh, use a, a, a darker value scheme. I think that would work great, you know, because that's going to push it forward and the stuff in the back, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to purposefully limit myself uh, in terms of the values and, um, and just, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you know, keep it very, uh, you know, like uh, very close to what's what's showing up back here. So I'm going to block this in, but I'm going to actually choose like just a little bit of a lighter value. I'm going to choose from the canvas and kind of block this in like with a with a little bit of a lighter value here. Hold on, let me uh, let me go on. And I want to see what I want to do. I think I want to. I love this idea of having like the the sandworm, you know, coming up. So I want to put one really big in the back. I want to put like a that's like a baby one. I think I want to put like a massive one in the back, like right here or something. I think that'd be fun. So I'm going to put like a giant one, like coming up out of here or something uh, i think it'd be cool to have it like turning or something like coming out and turning like that so i'm gonna i'm just gonna sketch it out real quick and drop this in and uh and i know like in the in the new dune movie i kind of liked it like the new dune movie it was that big one with like it looked sort of like this it didn't have the did they have one i can't remember if they had one in that movie in the new one that that had the the almost like the flower looking part to it. Remember, you know, like I, that's traditionally how I would remember like the Dune one. Like it looked like that, like that flower looking one where you had like, you know, the different, uh, different jaws or whatever coming out of it. But, um, but yeah, but I, you know, I liked, I liked the new one. I thought it was really cool. I thought it, I thought it was an interesting design, but I'll do kind of like a, a mix between both or something. But again, yeah, just think of the environment. Think of like, even with your starting colors, with all that stuff, like, like really think about it. And what would be happening, right? Like, I love this, Andy, that you did, like, where there's dust kicking up around it. 100%. Like, dust would be kicking up around it and stuff like that. All right, let's 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 see here. So let me kind of put this out. I want to put some... I, I should... I want to do, like, uh, maybe four. I think four would be cool. Four of these mandibles. I like... I want to keep them a little bit shorter. A little bit shorter. And I want to get a good gesture here for what, what the worm is doing. I want it to be a little bit bigger, I think. I want it to be fatter and thicker. This. Like that. Yeah, there's massive in the distance, like a huge one. Like that. And then we'll kind of draw the structures coming out of it. That'd be kind of cool. This one, I think, should be facing more towards me. Like that, right? That's kind of cool. All right. So once I once I kind of get like placement wise where I want to go with it, I'm going to really pay heavy attention to the values that I use. I really want to make sure that I'm using appropriate values and keeping it in the distance. Like the urge is always to like come in and make it super contrasting. And I don't want to do that. But I do want to want to incorporate a little bit like what Andy's got going there too, with like there's dust at the at the base of this thing and stuff. I want the silhouette to read as well. So I'm going to actually move this up a little bit. I want the silhouette to read there at the top. If it's too close to the ground, it won't, won't read. Let's see. Let's have this big thing. I'm just deciding on the, on the size and the location. I like that though, Andy. That's looking cool, man. Somebody needs to draw like a like a spacesuit of someone that's been eaten a long time ago or something. <laughs> right. Like an empty spacesuit, that'd be kind of cool <laughs> at the bottom. <laughs> Hopefully everybody had a good New Year's and a good holiday. Hopefully everybody did. Mine was um, mine was uh, uh, mine was really good. We went to um out in the in the in the you know back out in the woods in Oklahoma. We went out there and we were um we were just hanging out. It was like phones were not working great and stuff and. Um, it wasn't too bad, but, but phones weren't working great and stuff like that. And things. So I love that. I always love that when it's, uh, when it's out in nature like that. Can you imagine too being on Mars? Like what Mars would be like? Oh my gosh. Like how quiet that would be. 
there's not i mean man and like looking at, i was looking up at the stars in oklahoma thinking how crazy it was you know i, I was like dang like I can see so many stars out here as opposed to to Dallas where there's a lot of light pollution and stuff. I was like, man, I mean, can you imagine can you imagine being somewhere out like that? Like, and then looking up at the sky would be crazy. That would be absolutely crazy. It'd be awesome. Okay, I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab a value that's fairly close to where I want this in the distance. I don't want it to be too bright. I'm sorry, too dark. Oh, you have to rewatch it as you went to sleep halfway through, Andy. Yeah, the uh, you're talking about Dune. You're talking about Dune. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Dune is awesome. It's really good. The new one I think is really good. I I I, I was surprised. Like a lot of um, a lot of the studios and stuff are like uh, it, it was a pretty pretty interesting like uh, it wasn't it wasn't like a hollywood take on the movie as much as i thought it was going to be like which is great like i thought it was like much more artistic is what i mean like than than they typically do i thought it was really cool dude the sound design and stuff on that is so good too like it's so so good i like uh the other thing i wanted to mention to you guys too about this is a lot of times i, I know the lasso like fill brush is a great brush to use oh i love this i love that who's putting that person there <laughs> The lasso fill brush is really good to use. Like if you're making a silhouette, like, and then you can, you know, click the opacity button down here um, and, uh, you know, click the opacity button to, uh, to lock it in. And then you can be able to, to really, you know, adjust that. Um, so you said, Andy, would the shadow, what color would the shadow be? Dark blue or gray? Well, I think like this environment, like you're going to have, you're typically the blue in shadows on, earth is going to be because you have that blue sky you know reflecting into those shadow areas so what you want to do is really look here as a clue now uh, granted this is a image from mars rover so that's going to be you know a part of it too but um but if you look here like at the rocks like look at those shadows i think the majority of this is actually going to be pretty warm because the ground is pretty warm the sky is more diffuse but it's not going to be super blue um you know uh and so yeah so i think like that's a good reference and you can pretty much see it across the board right it's pretty like pretty warm like pretty warm and on overcast days you'll see the same thing on overcast days you'll see the same thing as well um oh no uh ria uh no there's no uh no don't worry there's no reference we're just having fun we're just uh we're just filling this in just uh, what i was encouraging everybody to do is just to think about the environment and think about uh think about like making something fit in here value wise color wise you know that like that kind of a thing um you know and just uh you know like uh think about what would what would fit here what would fit here like color wise value wise what would fit here like in the environment like what would what would make sense to live here and and that kind of thing so all right let's see here let's go this is where i need to be really careful with my values i want to kind of shift this and get like a sort of like a value scheme with this i want to i probably can make it a little bit more mid-rangey let's see so i'll come in like this i found for sure that that you know kind of getting a silhouette and and being able to like that's for me digitally like one of the huge things like that's an advantage digitally is being able to have a silhouette like this and control a lot of the gradients that are that are on that like it's a it's you can't do that in oil paint of course um but that's a big advantage like being able to do this because you start almost like pre-render everything from the get-go okay oh what were you guys talking about you were talking about something i can't stream both at the same time uh Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, is there a reference I should be following? I can't stream both at the same time. Oh, uh, tell me what you mean. Sorry, I don't know what you guys mean. If you, I'm not sure what you guys are talking about too. I mean, maybe you guys are having a private conversation too. I don't know, <laughs> but let me know. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So let's go here. I would think there'd be another one right here. And I'll put a fifth one like this and have this one be here. This overlap. Uh, this one would be here. 
that one would be there. Let's go like that. So I want to make this part darker. And again, this is where I really have to discipline myself value-wise. Like I can't go too dark. Like this is going to be in the distance. And so I need to keep that in mind. If I start going in, this is the urge. The urge is for me to come in and be like this and have that dark be super dark. I need to define the lights and the darks very clearly uh, for that distance, which is important. Let's go like this. I'm going to erase a little bit of this curve. What an interesting shape, but I'm going to erase a little bit of that. I think it was a good idea. Whoever was putting that guy in front of this uh, creature, that was fun too. I'm definitely going to do that. Put a guy right there. This would be darker. I like like the hairy, like like sort of nature of that, Andy. Like you've got kind of, you know, I don't know if that's like, if that's like the motion that you're implying when you when you get that, or if it's actually like, somewhat of like a like a hairy sort of uh i didn't know which one it was it might be the motion of it coming out almost like a like the motion of the uh of of the action but i like it if it was hair i'd like that i think that's really cool yeah i think that'd be awesome i don't often think about that but I, it would actually make it would actually make the creature like a little bit more like, I don't know, like having hair like that, like it might, if you're digging through the ground or, or you know, uh, like underground, I don't know, because moles are hairy, you know, moles are hairy. And so, like, I'm, I'm curious about that. That's interesting. Okay, so the light's coming from the left to the right. So there would be a cast shadow from this on the ground, too. I want to, I want to establish that. It would be in the distance, though. So let's see if, if I could get a, just a bit darker right here on the landscape. Oops. Okay, let's see here. That would definitely be casting a shadow there in the distance. But I want to put like definitely want to put some 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 sand one up here too. Yeah, this is definitely going to have some sand here. Okay. Nice basil. Uh, I'm gonna say basil, um, you know, because that's the just the first uh, first part of your name, basil. That that that's looking awesome. That that serpentine creature coming out of that. That's awesome. That's really cool. And see, that's what's interesting. I think like you take something kind of purplish or pinkish in this environment. Like, what would the what would the um, you know, what would the color scheme look like, right? What would the color scheme look like on this surface? Like, what would happen to it? Which is which is cool. Like, I, I love that. I mean, has anything pink ever been on on Mars? Like, maybe not. Maybe at one point, but probably not. You know, really interesting. Such a dead environment. JG, okay. <laughs> the two letters. What is that? <laughs> the two letters of chaos. Okay. <laughs> JG. Okay, so let's have this. I want to get like a, a brush that has like a textural quality to it for this. Make this look kind of, it's got like a cracked, sur or like the skin is like a cracked surface sort of a thing. Give that skin some some texture. I think this side would be pretty dark. Again, it's tricky, like kind of painting into this to get it, you know, to see what to think about what it would look like in the distance. I probably will go. I think that's okay. I might go a bit darker for the overall worm. I think might make the whole worm a bit darker. Like its local value is is a little bit darker, I think. I think I'm gonna do that. Let me do another. Let me duplicate this. And then I'm gonna make this a multiply layer. And yeah, make it a little darker. Let's try that. 
and that'll be good. I still want it to fade in the distance, but I just want the local value to be a little bit, a little bit darker. And I'll do that. That's a little better. Okay. Nice. I love how you guys have stuff like, like you know, whipping in and out of the sand and stuff. That's awesome. I think that's great. Nice, like, uh, and Andy, let that nice uh, texture to that surface, like where you got that like looping strokes. It's amazing how like those strokes will add up to that, that looking like you need it to look like. It's really interesting, actually. Um, you know, like how like the, all those strokes put together end up, you know, conveying that texture. I think about that a lot in uh, in like pen work, like in pen work, like when you want it to look like a scaly, you know, like a uh, textures are your thing. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, like when you want it to look like scales, you know, pen work, you can kind of load, like have it do something more like that or, you know, like that kind of thing. Yeah, right. There you go. That's cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so let's go a little bit lighter here. This. All right. Oops. Did I forget I'm on the eraser? I, I do that in every program. I do that in Procreate. I do that in Photoshop. I forget. <laughs> forget I'm on the eraser. Oh, there you go. That's nice, Andy. Like the uh, those like different uh, sections of it. I like that. Like you're breaking it up into those like scaly sections. See, this is the cool thing too, is like when you give yourself the permission to just, you know, play and try this stuff and, and, you know, it's, it's awesome. Like you can come up with some really unique designs and, and, and things. If you just give yourself permission to like keep modifying and keep trying, just, you know, I, I love that side of things. Like this is probably my favorite. This is like as a musician, you know, if anybody's a musician, like when you can get together with people and jam and do this and kind of just explore ideas and stuff, it's like pure creation. I love that. This is sort of the same thing where you just kind of are experimenting and, and trying stuff out. Let's see here. I want to. Yeah, let me. Shape is kind of deviating a little bit. I want to adjust this. This will. End up being a little bit more straight on. I like this. Yeah, I think I like Dune. What Dune came out a long time ago. I'm wondering when the next movie's coming out. Hopefully soon. It's a long time though, I guess, for all the effects and everything. Man, it takes forever. I've been getting into Blender a little bit lately and you know some some 3D stuff and and I'm like holy crap. I had somebody ask me there's a guy that um I train with at the uh at the MMA gym I go to and he's been doing actually in Dallas and in places around like he's actually got a job like somewhere else in another state now too. He's been doing like stunt stunt work. You know like fight stunt work and and he's he's a good fighter and everything and it's a uh, um you know, and so he's been he's been doing a lot of that. But he asked me the other day. He was like, "Hey, he's like, how hard would it be to uh, to you know if I had like a monster in this one scene for you to just like go in and and I don't know Blender very well to at all. I'm just like starting to learn it. And he goes uh, to for you to go in and like you know add a monster to this whole scene and all this stuff. And I told him I was like, <laughs> I was like, well, I was like, when you look at a movie, I was like, and you see the list of animators and all that, I was like, it's really hard, man. I was like, it's it's really, really difficult. So I can imagine, like, because I mean, they finished the filming schedule, like for something like, like Dune, you know, they finish it in probably two to three, you know, two to three, uh, you know, months or something like that. Or maybe not, the maybe the filming takes a little longer. Maybe it's like six months, but still the movie takes like four years. And like the majority of that is going to be, going to be because of all the, all the work they have to do on the effects and everything. So I told him, I was like, yeah, I was like, I would do a crappy job. I was like, and, you know, I was like, and it's going to be really hard for you to find somebody who will without having a whole team behind them and all that stuff. So, okay. So let's see. I want to get this to really look like it's in the, the distance here.
get this value scheme a little bit lighter. That's a little better. I want to make this a little more gray up top here. There we go. Nice. Uh, yeah, I like those like like almost like armored sections of that. Andy, that's that's really cool. That's really cool. I like it a lot. I want more sand to be here too. I want there to be like a ton of sand here. I want it to be like a crazy situation right here. And I want there to be like a darker value. Like because the this this the sand, the dust from the sand would be making a um yeah armor's uh, yeah armor's always cool Andy for sure armor's always cool okay let's see there'd be yeah be there there'd be a shadow on this on these plumes of sand there definitely would be stuff would be like shooting into the air too I want to kind of oh that's a cool brush kind of have this shooting up in the air this would be like this whole area if it was something that massive in the distance it would be like this whole area back here would just be like swallowed up with it i bet you some of it would be a little bit lighter too like yeah like some of this would be a little bit lighter that's the weird part like too when you have like something in the distance like this thinking of it you have to think of it as a physical object that has lights and darks and has shadows and it's really you know that's interesting that way okay let's Nice. I want to before the end too. I'm hoping I can I can finish this. I want to I want to be able to add a creature up there with you guys too. I want to add a add a creature up there. Okay, let's change the shape. I think it'd be cool to put like a have this uh, thing have like horns on it or something. Let me grab a textured brush sketchier brush what if this had like horns coming back up like or like uh not horns like spikes on it like going back like that that'd be kind of cool so then there'd be a shadow on the surface like this a little bit later Nice. So what um of all the sci-fi movies you guys, what's your what's your favorite sci-fi movie? I do like Dune. Dune is up there. It's one of it's 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 a good one. What's your uh, what's your favorite you guys think sci-fi wise? I'm curious. My like an awesome book that I was really like kind of bummed out like I thought I thought the uh, movie would be much better was uh, Ender's Game. Ender's Game is such a good book. And it was not like the the movie was kind of it wasn't great, but so many I know. Yeah, if you had to, okay, so let's say you had to pick top three, do top three, maybe that'll help. Like top three, what do you think? I'm curious because like I think this is like a generational thing too, because like there's certain like each generation has their like go to. For sci-fi, like I really think so. Like I mean, starting with like my brother's was like definitely, um, definitely Star Wars, right? Because he went and saw it in the theater. Oh, Predator, yeah. 
why don't you hey two letters of chaos why don't you take that character off that image like paint that character like he's standing right here or something paint him right there like he's standing uh like he's standing there on the uh on the surface put him on the surface we need an astronaut you know put him on the surface paint him on there man terminator and star trek okay nice Yes, Terminator's good. Terminator's really good. I, yeah, I agree. Terminator's a... That's got to be there. Give it a shot, two letters. Give it a shot and try it out and see. That's why we're here. We're here to just... Wait, that's all right. You know, we're, it doesn't have to be perfect. No, we don't need it to be perfect. Now we're having fun. Having fun trying this stuff out. Give it a shot. Yeah, Terminator. I remember, like, I remember too with Terminator, like when that came out. Um, it was like, especially Terminator. Was it Terminator? It was Terminator Two, right? That had the uh, like liquid metal guy, right? That was Terminator Two, I believe. But um, I just want to make sure I'm not getting it wrong. Somebody will be like, "That's not the right one," you know. But um, but uh, but when that came out, I remember. Yeah, I remember that when that came out. That was like a huge deal. Like everybody was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like. People were like, how did they do that? Like, how did they, you know, how were they able to, you know, to, to get that effect to work and do like, it looked like amazing. And I remember too, like even when Jurassic Park, like the first Jurassic Park came out, I remember like talking to my brother and being like, man, like, how could it get better than that? Like, how can it, how can it get better? And then you look back at it now and it like compared to what people do, I know like TVs have gotten and like the things that display the movie and stuff have gotten better, but, um, but it was like, I remember saying like, how, how could it get any better? I was saying that to him, <laughs> you know, like this is so, so good. And it, and it, you know, of course it, uh, that's what inspired you. Nice. Nice. That's awesome. That's great. That's super cool. Super cool. Yeah. I mean, man, I, yeah. Like with, with um, Jurassic park, I was just like, I don't even know how, like, I remember the whole scene where like, I can't remember those smaller dinosaurs are running through the field. Um, yes. Like Planet of the apes. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was right. It was impactful. That's right. And it's like crazy. I mean, like what, what, you know, the ingenuity and it's kind of cool. That time frame was really cool because they're like in effects, like the effects, like it, it took a lot of engine ingenuity and it took a lot of, um, thinking outside the box to get it done it still does but i feel like there's a little bit more of a method now like it's not quite as like like effects and stuff are not quite as punk rock as they used to be sort of you know what i mean um you know that now they're they're a little more you know like people do it like people just have a way of doing it and they uh and they and they utilize that which is fine but it's like there's something really cool about that you know i think i was even looking at um the way uh cuphead was developed and Cuphead was developed like they were doing like, you know, nobody had done for games on a scale that they did for that game. Like nobody had done traditional animation like that frame by frame animation on that scale really ever for a game. No one had done that. I mean, even uh, like Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair was really, you know, very, very, uh, you know, like heavy with like all the frames. Like if you guys remember Dragon's Lair, maybe some of you don't, but it was like a basically like a cartoon that you play through. But but they did 125,000 frames on Cuphead, and um, and like I think Snow White, the first Snow White movie, was 250,000 frames or something like that. So it, it crazy, like really interesting, really interesting that they were able to do that. But anyways, my whole point is like they were kind of figuring it out as they as they went along right when they were making that game they were like figuring it out and i watched this whole thing and it was really cool and they even had like the one guy's wife was like worked at like a she was like it worked as an investment banker or something like that and she started doing inking like she started doing inking for them you know which is like really interesting but it's like they were just figuring it out and so i feel like now it's it like i want to see more new approaches new new styles that's why I like uh, the spider verse stuff was really cool to me i think that was like a, a new way of of kind of moving forward and doing things really really interesting but I, yeah but at the time you know um uh, at the time uh you know jurassic park it was like oh my gosh like this was so epic and so crazy and 
like I'd like to see practical effects come back a little bit more. I'd like to see somebody do like a whole movie with just practical effects and see how it feels. I don't know. Like I think it would be interesting actually. Um I really think it would be. See that now. You guys think like I mean I like CG. I'm not saying I don't like CG, but I just I think um I think it'd be cool to see the practical effects come back for a movie. There were times when it looked super cheesy, of course, but um but but uh you know I I I don't know, I miss it. I miss it. I miss the practical effects a little bit. And uh and you know Jurassic Park had a mix. Jurassic Park had a mix. But admittedly there was parts that uh, of Jurassic Park that I was like, okay, that's pretty cheesy. <laughs> I was like that is fairly cheesy. <laughs> one of the raptors, I remember one 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 thing I was like, oh, okay. That's not that's a little bit. Okay. Yes, behind the legs. Yeah, 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 exactly. I know exactly what you mean, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Or like it would be the T-Rex's head like swinging in and out, you know? Swinging, <laughs> swinging in and out, like kind of just like okay, yeah, <laughs> that's funny. But I kind of miss that side of it too. Like I miss that side of it. Like there was like a quirkiness that you, I don't know, that you almost can't can't duplicate. I like it. I feel like though, um, was on a big arm. Yeah, exactly, exactly, totally, totally. I um. I think like uh, some of that is coming back in, I, I think like a lot of the new tools and a lot of the new things like are allowing creators to like, things are starting to hit like a, hit a critical mass and like everybody's tired of Disney, like re repackaging things and companies just doing the same crap over and over again. Everybody's kind of tired of that. So I think like people are going to start independently doing some things and, um, and I think it's going to catch up and I think, uh, I think uh, people will start, you know, utilizing new methods and new ways to do things. I, I think we're heading into a time where it'll be like that, where you'll have, as long as the the ways to make, like, to publish it, um, games are the new movies. Yeah, exactly. That's right. That's right. And people are doing really unique things. Like I said, with Cuphead, like, I think that was, like, really fascinating and interesting. And the fact that it worked was great. Like, I think that's really, really cool. I think it's amazing, you know, that it works and that they were able to get funding and finish it and you know uh that's awesome you know i think that's that's amazing so nice there you go two letters yeah <laughs> don't put it on top of there because i can't i can't see what I, you're making him like ride it i guess but i can't see what i'm painting on there <laughs> he's standing on there <laughs> that's funny <laughs> he's like riding the riding the sandworm <laughs> yeah you're right though games are the new uh they are the new movies you know with ai coming in and everything with games like it's going to be interesting like i i wonder if they'll ever come a come a time where like ai with like the the npcs and stuff like i'm wondering if there will come a time where um where uh that like when you go play a game like even the storyline will shift, right? Like, so what if the storyline was different for everybody, a little bit different for everybody? I mean, you kind of have that in some way, shape and form right now, but what if the storyline was completely different? Not completely different, but just like a total deviation. Like when you, uh, when you played it, like, or even if you went to a movie and the movie you saw was like, was completely different than the movie somebody else saw, right? Like the main character did something different. That would be really interesting. NVIDIA is working on it, yeah. Yeah, I saw that whole like where they were addressing, you know, that, that they had that person walk into the bar and say like, hey, you know, have you heard about those guys like doing this or doing, you know? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. That was crazy. That was pretty crazy. Um, man, if it gets to the but I'm wondering how long it'll take to get to the point where like when you go see a movie or you go or you play a game, it's like completely different for everybody that does it. I'm really I'm interested in that. Like, I, I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to wait and see, but I think it's closer than we probably think. It probably is closer than we think, but but uh, but yeah, fascinating. I mean, imagine that, like like imagine that, like infinite replayability, 
right? Like infinite replayability because it's like every time you get on, it's it's completely different. Like you never know. So like you you'd be like, oh man, I don't want to save my game because if I save my game and and or if I restart, I don't want to restart because if I restart, it's gonna be a completely different world. Like that'd be weird, right? That'd be super weird. Let's see. You get this indicated. Did I miss something too? Let me see if I if I missed something. Sorry. Um oh AI buddy that plays games with you. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, it's weird. That's so weird. But I think that's the future. I think like I think like people will there'll be unintended sort of storylines. Like I think there'll be like people will game developers will make something or whatever, and there'll be unintended storylines eventually where they're like, we didn't even know that that would come about from that and somebody would be like oh you can trigger this if you if you go here and do this and i already i even saw people doing that with like uh it's programmed right now but like that red dead redemption like people doing that with red dead redemption like like finding stuff that like they can trigger like oh you can trigger this event if you go here and do this and do that and kind of do you know all these different things it's really interesting but that's of course programmed in but it could it get to the point where it was where it wouldn't be, you know, where it, it uh, you know, uh, you could you could just program it in and then it would surprise the uh, surprise the developers. That'd be crazy. That is the future. I agree with you, man. I agree with you. What if movies were like that too, right? So you just had like an actor, like you had like an AI sort of actor that like they film maybe that actor doing a whole bunch of different things. And then it creates the story for each like each time you go to the movie theater that would actually revitalize the movie theater experience like if they had if they had something like that that every time you went you could go with friends and it would be a different it'd be a different uh different movie for you know and then you'd go with someone so you could experience that right so you can't record and you can't you know take it with you but you go with someone and you experience a, a movie that other people didn't see that no one's seen right it's all new that's so weird to think about really crazy but i think it's coming i really do think it's coming i mean i think it's uh it's on the way which is which is just blows my mind blows my mind oh that's why games are better as uh as the story and rpgs are different yeah yeah exactly and i like like that's that's like uh i remember i played um I played, you know, growing up a lot. Like I played, yeah, Baldur's Gate. Yeah, is the third one good? I haven't played the third one, but I played like the original. I was just going to mention that. That's so funny that you mentioned that. I was just going to say that. Um, I played the, uh, I played the first two, and I played like Icewind Dale and stuff like that. Um, is the third one good? Oh, you love it. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it's like you can take, you can have a whole different take on that. Like you can, you can um, decide what you want to do and. You don't, you don't have to go the route of everybody else. You can kind of decide who you want to be and all that stuff. And so that's fascinating when the, when the lead character can change, like when that whole dynamic can change, that's, that's fascinating and interesting, I think. So imagine that for a movie. Like, well, man, when the movie I saw, like he wasn't even good. They'd be like, what? No, he wasn't a good guy. He was like, he was bad. And he, you know, that'd be, that'd be so crazy. You know, people would be like posting up little clips on YouTube, like, look at the movie I saw when I went, you know, I don't know. That's that's fascinating. Played solo and killed off. Well, let me see that. I missed that. Sorry. Played solo and killed off the main characters off uh, to loot, right? <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, when you, that's really cool. <laughs> when you don't, you really don't have to follow the rules. I mean, that looked, that game was on a Kickstarter, right? I think it was like a Kickstarter thing. Um, You know, Oh, nice. Okay, Rhea. Good job. I love that. I'm going to put something next to that snake. That's great. You did awesome. Really cool. Good job there. I'll put something next to it. With the longbow. Nice. Okay. That's really cool. Yeah, I saw they had a Kickstarter for that, and I was really happy about that. Like, See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think... I think like independent developers in games and in movies, I think that's going to be more of a thing moving forward, which is going to be really cool because I think that's what everybody's frustrated with. Everybody's frustrated with 
the lack of willingness on the studios parts on all different studios, like the lack of willingness to, um, to take risks, right? Because they don't want to take risks. They, they want They want that bottom dollar and they want to make all that money. And they, um, you know, they don't, they don't want to take risks on projects that are unique and stuff because they just don't, they're like, cause I remember like I, when I was looking at that, um, at that cuphead, like kind of documentary, it was sort of like a YouTube video. That was like a documentary. They were talking about how everyone was like, you have no market. Like they said, you're making your games too hard. Like you're making your game really hard. And they remembered all the old school games that everybody loved that were really hard. And they said, no, this like fits the, fits the, you know, theme of the game and all that stuff. And all these people were like, you don't have a target demographic and you don't have like, and it's just so funny. Like, and they just like kind of ignored it. Like that aspect of it, they ignored it and just said, now we're going to, we feel like it's the right decision, you know? Yeah. Like dark souls. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, Warhammer rogue trader. Oh, nice. Okay. Nice. That's cool. That's great. Yeah. But I, I, I hope we're moving into that, that, um, that kind of an era. And actually, like it's weird, but I like I never would have had this kind of a project. Like I would have wouldn't have been able to do it. I'm actually working on with with some other guys on a game. It's just a private person. Like we had done an animation for him, and he wanted us to do a game, you know, in conjunction with the like sort of with that with that animation. Not not a hundred percent related to it, but just it's a long story. But like um, but now it's just a private person that wants a game, you know, and. I'm like, well, can I learn GD scripts? And I'm like, well, there's enough out there for me to really dive in. And it's such so low in scope, like the game that we have to do, that it's like uh, that I'm that I'm learning it. So, and it's working. Like I'm able to like go in and do it. And I was like, man, this is such a crazy like time to be living in, where I can be like, oh, you know, I don't know anything about game programming. I'm like, but there's enough out there where I can have like. So I have like a year to do it. And it, again, it's so like if it was anything really really crazy in scope i couldn't do it like i would just be or i would just hire someone i would just hire someone to, and i still might need to i still might need to hire someone to come in it was, i'm sure i'll probably get lost and need to hire someone but but even so like you know and they'll come in and be like oh man you shouldn't have done it like this and you shouldn't have done it like this or whatever but um but even the fact that i can even do a lot of it now already is just crazy like i think that's just it's a really interesting time so i hope i hope it, it encourages more independent, you know, developers, more independent filmmakers, like, you know, I mean, you can kind of, you could, I mean, Blender, you can do like on Blender, like you could conceivably, somebody could make a short film on their own, rendering it on their own computer and like, and do it, you know, and it would be good, right? That could like rival a, a full film would be really hard, but conceivably they could do that, you know, and, and, uh, you know, just kind of get it done if you had the knowledge and you or you gained the knowledge or whatever. It's really interesting. So it's a fun time. Fun time. I think it's I think it's curious. So Titans Quest 2 should be amazing. Oh, I don't know Titans Quest 2. I don't know that. Cool. But yeah, you're right though. I think games are like games are like interactive stories. It's like choose your own adventure. I did choose your own adventure when I was a kid, those books, and and like games are sort of like that. Where it's like uh you know, like it really is, you know, all about, you know, all about the, the choices you make and stuff like that. And I, I got to tell you this too, like thinking of like Baldur's Gate and like the tiny bit of programming I've done in, in uh, Godot with like GD script and stuff, like thinking of what they have to do for those games is like, dude, I, I don't even know how they do it. Like to have, I mean, it's really hard. Like it's like a ripple effect. You do one thing. And it leads to these other things down the road, like that change and like it makes it really difficult. Like, and so to think about like all the programming that goes into that, I can't even like having certain things be persistent over time and like having this decision lead to this and lead to that and lead to this. Like, I can't, man, that's like makes my head spin. Like just a little bit that I've done like makes me feel like how are they doing that like how are they keeping track of all that like that's and just organizing it all like holy cow oh. looking forward to the next game yeah yeah for sure uh ria what was it you said okay you what were you saying that you figured out 
Hey, I see Anya in here. What's up, Anya? Good to see you in here. Good to see you. We're doing some like, you know, hey, hey, what's up? We're doing some like Dune, Dune-ish kind of stuff in here. So we're we're having fun, having fun doing that. Um, you know, this is this is actually in uh Mars, on Mars. So this is like a an environment there. So oh, you couldn't get back in. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Good. I'm glad you made you made your way back in. Glad you made your way back in. I want to put some stuff. I want to put like some some ground, some stuff on the ground out here. Some areas that are like a little bit darker out here. Other like topography, I think, to make it more interesting back here. And I want to saturate this a little bit. I'm going to go in and saturate this just a tiny bit. I don't want the values to get too crazy. I don't want it to be too crazy, but I'm going to saturate it a little bit. Some sand up in here, too. Let's do the splatter one. Yeah, that'll be good. I want some of the sand to be like, and I want to think about the sand as a physical object. Yeah, there you go. On you putting putting someone in there. That's what I was talking about earlier, like having someone like, you know, standing up against this this sandworm, like maybe even just like kind of having someone in that dust, like stuck back there in that dust, like someone's in there, they're about to get swallowed up. <laughs> and I, I now this is like doing this is making me um making me uh want the new dune to come out it really is just to be a little smaller this sand I want to make this aerial perspective be a little bit more pronounced too. I just want to take that sky value and kind of push it back a little bit. A little bit like kind of push it into that that distance. But I think there'd be a lot more sand busted up around it. Like it would be a lot more. There'd be a lot more going on there. A lot more there. I want to make it a little smaller though. But What's up Nexus? Oh, that's cool. I like that in the back there. That that's cool. That's great. Like giving some context in there. Yeah, that's really really cool. Oh, you have to feed the cats, Rhea? Well, you better feed them because they they'll let it. They'll make it known. Cats will be like, "Hey!" Like it's their equivalent of yelling. They're like, "Well," like it's their their equivalent of yelling. <laughs> They'll start going on your your computer desk and knocking over all your stuff. Like, give me my food. <laughs> you know. <laughs> there you go, Anya. Yeah, with the yeah, that's right. That's right. right? They, they they make it known. It's funny. They're like dogs are just like dogs are just like get all up in your business. Like, you know, and they're like, Where's my food? They just like stand there and stare at you. Cats are like, they're like the passive aggressive, you know, way of like <laughs> They're kept passive aggressive. They're like, give me my food. You know? <laughs> I've had so many students that I've taught over the years say, like, man, I was working on a cast drawing or I was working on this painting and my cat like knocked it over or did like <laughs> or scratched it or did like some sort of thing, you know. <laughs> so funny i've heard that a lot over the years i've heard that a lot <laughs> i like that with the the like the the clothing on you like that clothing is cool you gotta love me yeah, i know they're, they're good my kids like i'm allergic to them 
you know, I, but I, I would want to get one of those like Sphinx cats, you know, like the Sphinx cats I think are really cool. Um, I think my, my family doesn't like them. They think that it looks ugly. Like the, you know, where they've got no hair, you know, I like them. I think they're really cool. Um, but I've heard that they're mean. Is that right? Have you guys heard that? That the Sphinx cats, like those, those ones that have no hair, are they mean? I've heard they are. Anybody heard that? Those guys are mean. Okay, yeah, that's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Okay. I kind of like that too, though. I kind of have like a, a appreciation for like really mean animals. I kind of, <laughs> there's a part of me that likes them. <laughs> so ugly, they're cute. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. They're like the Sharpay of the cat world. Sphinx cat, the Sharpay of the cat world. That works. Okay. Two letters is uh, two letters. I like that you put your guy there. Put a put a drop shadow on that. Put a drop shadow on the um, on the guy that's standing there too. On your, uh, would you say it was like a Roblox character or something like that? Oh, go for it, go for it, Rhea. Oh, you got kittens. Oh my gosh, there's nothing, there's nothing cuter I think than um, oh so like a drop shadow. It would be like this. Like so, I'll show you. If you look at the rocks over here, if you look at the rocks over here. They've got shadows on them, right? So they have a shadow that's on the object itself, like right here. But then they've got a shadow coming off of that. So you could actually even color pick from that and get a shadow coming off your character and then put a like a shadow on the side of your character too, right? So you can make it look like he's kind of standing in the environment. So that'd be cool, I think. I think it'd be cool to do that. All right, I want to do a creature up front with you guys too, Anya. I like that. I like that that guy in the uh, in the midst of the sand. Actually, I might do a little more sand before I come up there with you guys. That's cool. It's fun. I might put in some some. Uh, of it looks like he's commanding it now like in there for what you did which i think is really cool go so just a bit lighter these values back here when stuff's in the distance like this man is so close the values have to be so 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 close you can't overstate it there you go nice i like that Okay, I'll pull from that and come in here and get a little bit of a, you know, like a little bit of a um, lighting. And whoops, I want to go really low opacity here. Kind of get a bit of that in there. Like that, it's like the sandworm wizard. That's fun. I love it. I love it. Okay. I want to come up front and I wanna I wanna add a creature to here too with you guys. I like the idea of it coming out of a hole in the ground, that kind of thing. It's cool. Here. And let me know if I'm too close to you, Andy. Anybody else affected by the storm? Yeah, we had a um we had a storm uh here uh last night and um and uh it was my neighbors like told us that uh that like the fence, like and I looked over their fence, part of their fence got blown down. We had a pretty pretty decent storm here last night, so um, that was crazy. Like their fence got blown over. There was a lot of wind last night here. Um, so. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm in I'm in Texas. And so I don't know where you're at, but I'm in Texas. And so um sometimes the the man, sometimes the wind gets whipping in Texas. It gets whip and like the wind gets crazy. It gets really crazy. Tennessee, okay, so same difference. Yeah, same difference. Yeah, it was it was kind of bad. It was it was definitely kind of bad last night we it's it's like funny because we i sort of traded like in pennsylvania it would be cold and we would get um we would get a uh you know like ice on the trees it would and all the trees like the, all the limbs would start falling and we'd have like you know like different different things like that and then you know i traded that in texas for like the wind and like the It'll it'll just all of a sudden just go crazy in Texas. Like it'll you'll be you'll be thinking everything's normal and fine, and then all of a sudden it's just like it goes crazy. You just wait five minutes and the weather will <laughs> will change or whatever. But it's uh it's interesting that way. But it's yeah, it it can it can slam. It can slam. I'm growing cacti in my backyard too, and like even the way cacti like they like to be watered like a lot at once and then not watered at all. Right. And so, you know, you're like, oh, OK, well, that's that's the way the weather is in Texas. Like you just get a ton of water all at once and then you get none, you know, for a long time. So. Well, 100 mile per hour wind was normal. Holy cow. For real. That's crazy. 100 mile per hour winds. Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. And I never I, I mean, I, I mean, I remember it being windy like. When I was in Estes Park, like I went there on my honeymoon and I remember like climbing and stuff and it being windy up there, but like, especially in the flats. Oh, wow. That's crazy. I mean, but I, I mean, I would expect that like as the higher you climb, it would be like that, but. Oh, there you go. Two letters. Yeah. Your guys just like standing. That's right. <laughs> standing there like, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Man, that's a hundred mile an hour winds, though. That's crazy, dude. You could stay up forever if you were in a glider. You could stay up forever. That's your old stomping ground. Oh, nice. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, like that. I, I, um, I loved, I loved Estes Park. Like when my wife and I were there. Like, man, I loved that so much. Yeah, it's really pretty. It really is. Like we, um, we, uh, it was funny. We got there. And we hiked this one path. Like I was, we got there and we were like, "Hey, let's." We wanted to hike right away, so we just picked one and went. And we were like climbing up for like a long time. And then, I mean, we it was hours. Like we went really early in the morning. It was the first day, and we were climbing for like, like uh, man, I don't even know how long it was. It was probably like five hours because we went at like seven in the morning, and it was like lunchtime. And I was like, "Man, we've been climbing for like five hours or something." And, um. And it was starting to get pretty steep. Like it was getting pretty steep. And then this guy was going up the path and he's like, Hey, he's like, you might want to go back. He's like, there's a storm up, up top there. We could see it. Like we were in the clouds and I was like, Oh man. And, um, and he's like, you might want to go back. And I said, where are you going? He's like, Oh, I'm going up in there. That's fine. I'm used to it. So we, uh, so when we come back down and we go back, it took us like, we, it took us like four or five hours to go up. And then it took us like, you know, two or three hours to go down. And, I was like, man, I was like, I was like, well, dang, like that was, I was like, this is going to be some serious hiking here. And then we got back and we saw like the rating of it was really high. Like that particular one was like a really high rated trail. I can't even remember what it was or the, the hiking path. And, and I was like, I was like, man, of course we picked like an eight out of 10 on our first day there. It was like, <clears throat> you know, they rate it like zero to 10, like how difficult it is. And I was like, oh man, I was like, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> I, was like, I was like we picked of course we picked that that one you know um yeah i don't know what it was i can't remember what it was but it was it it started off like not horrible but then it started to be like on the way up where i had to like grab trees climbing up it was like really steep but then we got to a part that was so high i think we went up like a good like we were up like we were at like like nine or ten thousand feet or something i think and um and so I was like, because we were starting to get like, you know, we could feel it, you know, like when we were climbing, we were like, dang, we can, it feels like a lot harder up here, you know? Um, so 
Uh, yeah, so that was funny, man. Like, we just picked a random one and we, you know, <laughs> people in Colorado be crazy. Yeah, that guy was just like, like, he was just like going up there. He's like, he's like, I'll be fine. He's like, I've got experience with it. I'll be fine. I was like, because he said, you might want to turn back. And then I was like, oh, thanks. And then I was like, well, where are you going? He's like, I'm going up there. I was like, oh, jeez. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pretty funny. I loved it. I was like, that dude's awesome. He was just like, I'm going. See ya. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah. Got a little like lizard guy. I'm gonna have his tongue being sticking out or something. Get this right. Sitting out and sitting on the ground. When do you guys? So this is a this is an image of Mars. When do you think? When do you think it's feasible for us to uh, get to Mars? When do you guys think it'll be feasible? Or when it, when it would be feasible for us to, to make it there? What's your opinion? I'm curious. Like where, where humans set foot on Mars. It's really complex, of course. It's going to be really... I know Elon Musk like wants to live there. But you guys think? 100 years? Yeah, I think so. I think that's about right. They have 50 to 100. Yeah, I think I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good range. That's a good range. Ah, what tells you aren't we aren't we aren't already on it? Hey, that's true. That's true. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, yeah, cuz like the rover is on it. So, but before a human does it, I think it's impossible. It could it could turn out to be a big challenge, you know, a really big challenge. I think the big thing is like getting a human there um, without wars, people would do it faster. Yeah. I, I think they might, they might do it faster or we might, or we might get to a point that we're like, yeah, I mean, I think even if we had wars, wars in some spots of the world, like if, if scientists could do kind of like the CERN type of thing, you know, like the, uh, the Hadron Collider, if they could do that kind of a thing, it would potentially happen sooner. Yeah, I agree with you there. Change my mind, might take 50. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I think, so this is my thing. I think, um, I think the big issue, like with getting humans there is like, it, you know, it's, you know, you'd have to, you'd have to, it's so far away, you know, it's so far away that it's going to take years to get there. And that's the issue, right? The issue is like, I think we have to get to the point where we can like live in space. Like, like we could be in space, like, like, uh, endlessly, like, like where people can go up and they figure it out where people can go up to the space station and not have to come back if they don't want to, like not have the need to come back. I think that'll be the big turning point, I think, because I think at that point there'd definitely be people willing to take like a four year trip to get there, you know, or a three year trip or two year trip to get there or whatever. There'd definitely be people that would be willing to do that. Um, but right now it's like you, you're going to get there and maybe, maybe I guess they could get to the point where they, you can get there and then maybe medically repair yourself from it, you know, or whatever. There'd be people willing to, there would definitely be people that would be willing to do that too. But right now it would just wreck you. It would kill you. It would kill you to get there. So, and how are you going to bring all the food? And how are you going to, you know, like, man, like, that's what a task. Like, that's crazy. It's, it's interesting. It's an interesting idea and an interesting proposition. I don't know why nobody's talking about the moon. Why not go to the moon first? It's so much closer. Why is no one talking about building a base on the moon? You know? Yeah, the Martian. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, I loved that. I thought it was awesome. Has any? I haven't read the book. Is the book good? I'm assuming it is. It got you know picked up for the movie, and I think it was it did really well. The book did, but um, yeah, no, I haven't seen that. The, or I haven't uh, I haven't read it, but I've seen The Martian. I like The Martian. That was good. It was awesome. Book is great. Oh, okay, cool. Nice. That's really good. 
need to read that. There's a bunch of books, man. I need to read. I've got like a list right now of books I need to read. They didn't explore 100 percent the ocean. It would be very yeah, right, yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah, and see, I feel like there's like certain things where like like we like the ocean is the same, like it it's exponential, right? Like when you start like when you start going deeper and deeper, it like the deeper you go, the harder it gets. It's sort of like the speed of light. The um the the faster you go, the harder it gets to go faster. So really interesting. Um the author uh that author wrote one of my favorite books, Hail Mary Project. Oh, okay. Very cool. Hail Mary Project. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know what that was. That's cool though. Now now there's another book I gotta do which sounds awesome, but now there's another book. <laughs> I'm going to make this uh, lizard drooling. Terraria Calamity. Oh, okay, Terraria Calamity. I do. I like I like both those things for sure. Terraria Calamity, okay. Is it like is it like built off of Terraria the game Terraria? I've played that before. I put some drool from this, uh, this lizard. He's drooling on the surface here. Oh, it's a mod of it. Okay, okay, I see. Well, that's cool. That game has probably been modded like man so many times. Yeah, that game was fun. That was unique too. Like that was a very unique game. Was that an independent developer that did that? Do you guys know? That wasn't a big company, right? That was like an independent developer. I believe it was. Again, like I said, I, man, I just, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next, you know, 10, 15 years. I'm really curious to see. I think like you're going to see all these, you know, like these studios pop up and, and, and different uh, things happen. I think it's a good time. I think it's a good time. And Disney's making it easy, like doing the constant remakes and all the, and everyone's just like so tired of it. I mean, I like, I, I don't know how you guys feel, but like, I loved Marvel and now I'm like, I don't even like a new Marvel movie comes out and I'm like, I don't, do you guys feel like you still want to see them? Like, I feel like I don't want to see them. Like, I just don't care anymore. Like I, I'm not, I'm like, I'm done with it. Uh, you know, I just feel like they're boring. You know, what do you guys think? I don't know what you guys think, but that's my take on it. I'm just like, I'm not interested. Like, I don't even look at it. Like, I don't have time to look at a lot of things too, but I don't, I don't even look at it anymore. I don't like then when they have a new thing coming out, I'm like, uh, whatever. It's probably sucky. You know, it's probably crappy. Um, that's, that's unfortunate, but that's kind of how I feel about it, which is a shame because I love Marvel. And I like I love Star Wars too, but I just am not like excited about about what they're doing. It just isn't. It's all the same. It's like the same movie just repackaged over and over and over again. I don't know. I sound like an old man, honestly. Like when I'm saying stuff like that, <laughs> maybe everybody else disagrees. But I, <laughs> I definitely sound like an old man. I'm like back in my day, Marvel was good. <laughs> it's no, it's just repackaged, you know. <laughs> oh man, but I am old, so I guess it tracks. We need Brandon Sanderson to let James Cameron do the Stormlight Archive no novels. Nice, yeah. See, but I feel like that's even what I'm saying. Like, I think that's your hot take. Nice. I, but I mean, I think like, I think even like I feel like I don't even want like the big budget people to do it anymore like i want an independent studio to do it so that it'll actually be good you know like not that james cameron i mean james cameron obviously is is good but like but um you know he's got he knows how to make a movie obviously but it's uh i don't know like i i want like independent studios to do it um to 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 make it interesting right like so that it's not the same crap that's been done over and over again i think that um I don't know. I want to see that. Like, I want to see like an, like, like I, I hope it shifts that way. Like I said, and, I mean, if you don't have to pay, like, I don't think I know it's marketable and stuff and I know it helps make money, but I think the majority of us now, like we don't really care about, we care about a good job being done by the actors, but we, I don't think most people now 
go to see a movie because Brad Pitt's in it or because like whatever, like I think that's sort of done. Like I don't, I think it's more about the content and it's more, I mean, maybe that, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe I'm naive and I'm wrong about that, but I feel like people want, don't care. Most people don't care. Like, like they just, you know, independent, okay. Independent studios are cool. Hollow Knight. Yeah. Hollow Knight's great. Team Cherry is a minuscule indie game company and that game is my favorite. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right, right, right. Exactly. Anya. Right. Like that, like it's starting to shift that way. And like, um, Cuphead, I love Cuphead. I love the aesthetic of it. And it sort of is the nostalgic side for me. Um, you know, with the old school games and like also that era, I love that era. Like it's really fun. Um, and the music score is awesome. And like, there's, you know, um, yeah, so it's, it's, yeah, it's really, it's really, uh, yeah, I, I hope things shift that way, but I don't, I don't think anybody cares about that anymore. Like, I just don't, I don't know. I don't think people like, I, like I, um, I teach an animation class and, the students were talking about uh, murder drones, this, this show on YouTube called murder drones. And they were talking about, um, uh, dang it. What's the other one that, that there's another one. It's like the something circus or something like that. Um, that's out right now that I didn't know about. They told me about it. And, uh, and, and it's this new show that's out and it's like 200 million views on the, for, on the pilot on YouTube. And I was like, Holy crap. And it's this just independent, you know, group of people just doing it and making this show that appeals to people. And I was like, this is fascinating, actually. Like, this is really interesting. Um, so, so support people if you can, like support games and like, you know, independent stuff if you can. But like, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think, I think, um, I think we wouldn't, we, uh, we don't necessarily have to, I don't think we need those stars. Like a, a budget of a movie, like you have like the Joker, Right. Like the Joker is, I guess, like a movie like the Joker, which I like. I like the movie, you know, the, the newer movie, the Joker that came out. Um, Joaquin Phoenix is in that. And that does make a difference having him in the movie for sure. Uh, now, could somebody else be in there and and have it like be just as good? Yeah, I think so. Would, would it have gotten the uh, acclaim? Maybe not. I don't know. But we need to find like find another actor that's just as but i guess maybe there aren't maybe it's hard to find that i guess but um but that, he he would that movie was probably like a 30 million dollar budget or something and he was probably like 25 million of that that's what i'm saying i just don't i think that model might might go by the wayside i don't know hopefully let's we'll see but i want to adjust some things on the silhouette of my creature back here I want to make this a little bit more spiky. This a little bit more spiky. Make the silhouette a little bit more clear. Hey, Rhea, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. You guys don't know that. Um, that's old school. <laughs> okay let's see uh i didn't want to sing it all out because i suck at singing and uh it's, i don't want to do it on a live stream so just kind of speak it because then somebody's going to play it back and they're going to play back that part a bunch of times and send it to me and be like john you suck and i'll be like i know <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Fun. So I've got my lizard, my like gecko, my desert gecko. I need to make him, you know what I need to do? I need to make him like red. I need to make do like a color layer. I want to make him like red. He needs to be red for Mars. Color burn. Let's see if this color burn works. That's interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of different styles in here. I agree. I agree, Rhea. There's like a lot of different styles. It's fun. I agree. Let's go like this. Get this to be a little bit more red. Actually, I don't know if I like the color burn side of it. Let's do color dodge. Let's try this. 
That's more interesting. And then I'm going to erase parts of that through. Make him a little bit more of a, a rusty red, kind of Mars-ish color. I'm going to bring that down. I have like a stronger highlight on this guy too. I'm sort of I want to grab the sky color and value. Drop that in here. And then actually indicate where this nostril is too. Anything, anything. I love this in the, I love Nexus. I love that in the background. That's awesome. It's like a like a whole like city back there, you know. Um, I love that. That's really cool. We could do some vehicles too, or something that are like coming out from there. Like maybe have a vehicle in the distance. I'll do it. Like a little guy, like the like a kind of a Mad Max looking <laughs> thing in the distance coming towards. It's kind of fun. Going to keep it loose, like the shape's really loose. Oh, you know what I could do too is I could use some of the um, some of the shapes, like some of the shapes uh, stuff that they have on uh, here on Magma. Let me show you. Let me let me a little bit. I want this to be a little bit more hard edged. Okay, let's just make it like a like a Mad Max like van kind of a thing coming in the distance. Sort of like a weird vehicle coming back coming at us. I'm going to lighten this, I think, but that sort of thing. Let's go like this. Have a little bit of a dust cloud behind it being kicked up. Yeah, there you go, Nexus. That's awesome. That's like, yeah, there you go. It's cool. Some tracks in there. And that's the whole thing. I think like, you know, like when you're thinking conceptually, like, you know, you want to think about like what would exist in the environment? How would it, you know, how would it look at, you know, here? What, what would it be built like? What would it, you know, all that stuff becomes really important. Let's see here. But like gonna lighten this up, but sort of vehicle zoom in a little bit. Kind of like a I guess it's kind of like a rover kind of shape or something, sort of. Have a drop shadow under it. to be a bit darker coming forward. Okay. I'm going to give it, I want to give it a little bit of a different shape. I'm gonna get rid. I was thinking like that it would have like a bubble sort of thing on it, but I think I want to dispense with that, like a kind of like a bubble, like windshield kind of a thing. But I want to dispense with that. Have this coming through like this. Maybe I will do a little bit of that in the front. 
like that kind of thing coming through like that something like i mean it could be pretty abstract i guess but when it's that far back it can be pretty abstract but i do want to get like an interesting silhouette that's the thing like it needs to read the silhouette needs to read like machinery or something like that so it needs to we could tie the story together and have it be a portal from a wizard oh nice there you go i like it let's do it sure go for it do whatever you want to do that way i say go for it i'm gonna grab a hor like a more horizontal brush and here we go and then get some of the sky reflecting into this you know this vehicle or whatever like the sky would be hitting that like that It'd be reflecting onto that and you'd have sand be in here like that kind of a thing some sort of a weird kind of car vehicle thing See if I can. And then we probably have some of the sand bouncing, hitting some of this, like the different panels and stuff. And again, I want it to be abstract, but I just want it to, to read sort of like there's machinery in there or whatever. But it's a, but that it could be like a valid kind of shape. Okay. I love, Anya, that you were like, I got this. Like, we're, we're going to tie the story together. Let's do it. You know, <laughs> go for it. That's fun. Isn't that cool too? Like how you can start artistically, like with a with an idea. Like you just start with something, like and then it it, it it's like a domino effect. I think there's there, that's like that's so awesome. I think like when when it comes to art, like that's that's such a cool thing. Like you start pulling on threads basically, and start like finding like something that you like that resonates for you and like I, I don't know i just think it's really cool like that artistic process is such a it oftentimes it's like a mysterious sort of process i think as well um and you know it when you do it but it's like you know it's uh it's cool it's really you know it's it's that, that whole process is fascinating like and because i mean i have people oftentimes say how do you generate ideas or how do you you know and that's basically how you do it like you start pulling threads and like seeing if you can seeing if you can you know like start telling a story like that i think it's really interesting you just don't know where you're going to end up like you don't know where you're going to end up uh, when you start and i think that's really really cool i'm addicted to that side of things like <laughs> where it's like you know you just like this kind of thing where you're you're figuring stuff out and trying to trying to get an idea and you can kind of just you know like go through from idea to idea to idea i love that so so fun it's like a uh, when i when i played in a band like going and recording like recording was my favorite playing live is fun too but right i wing it but in our straight years i wing it nice <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the whole thing like you start to build up a skill set but then like you start to hit like you don't want to lose you don't want to lose that side where you're exploring and trying things right you don't want to make it so like predictable that you that you're not you know that you don't give yourself that option i think so you still have to have you still have to have discovery right as an artist important and that's what happens with musicians i think like i heard one musician talking about like i was like you know talking about why i think it was dave grohl from uh from foo fighters he was talking about why because they asked him like why is everybody on drugs all the time like why are musicians always on drugs and he said it's boring 
So that's why he said it's like a really boring job. He said, because you, um, you tour all the time. So all you're, all you are is like inside hotel rooms. He's like, you're inside hotel rooms and then you're playing the same show. And it's like the same thing over and over again, like the same songs. Like you're like, people are saying the same things. Like it's, it's fascinating that way when you think about it, like you, you know, you imagine it being this like amazing lifestyle and stuff, but it's actually kind of boring. And the, in the long term, it's kind of boring. So you just end up playing the same song like four, like 300 nights a year. Same exact thing, which is just crazy. It's crazy when you think about that. When I was a kid and I was playing in a band, I thought that was like the best job. I was like, that would be the best job ever. Okay, let me see. Uh, yeah, let me see. Let's see what you're talking about. Okay, does that read? Um, okay, let me see. Where are you? Oh, are you talking about like next to the um, to your character, like the the like this right here? Which part are you talking about? Oh, this part. Oh, oh, being like sort of like a. Uh, I don't think so. I don't know if it reads. I'm not sure. Yeah, like the portal. No, I don't think it does. Like, I don't think it. Oh, I see. Like a portal coming. That. Oh, I got you. Like the portal's coming that way. Yeah. No, I don't think it does. I don't think it does. It looks like just a uh, like the section kind of covered or whatever. I'm not sure it reads 100. percent Unfortunately, it just looks like that side's kind of covered. Wonder where we could. There's probably like a better placement we could have for it. Maybe. Um. Maybe that would make it uh, make a difference. Um, maybe I think, or maybe just like a different value scheme or something. I think might make a difference, but I could go a little darker on this inside this vehicle. I think I could push. The, I don't want to push the values too much because it's in the distance, but I think I could go a little bit. Okay. Yeah, up there would be cool. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's really cool. Yeah. You could have like a um like you could have a yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah. I like this too, Andy. Like this that's showing up in the back like that, like spike like that that creature coming out. I think that's really cool. I'm gonna put a drop. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a drop shadow on this uh, man face guy. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna make these guys look like they're sitting on the in the environment. I think I have to do a new layer that's a little bit higher, but I'll do that. I'll raise this up. Okay. This. This is looking cool, guys. Got like a cool like dune environment. Dune-ish environment. Nice. I love it. But see, like, see, and, and isn't it interesting? Like, it's interesting, like, when you have an environment like this, like, like the color palette that you end up choosing, like the type of shapes that you put in. And so, you know, it's, it's, there's things that are appropriate, but you can kind of push that too. Like, I think like this purple is like interesting too. Like that's like pushing it a little bit further and like in a different direction. And I think like the key thing, like for me, like when I was drawing this lizard or painting this lizard, I, you know, I'm just having fun with this guy, like making him sort of like he's a gecko, a big old gecko that lives on there. Not that he'd have anything to eat really, but like, but, um, 
maybe maybe he eats rocks you know and that's why he's just sitting there drooling because he's just seeing all these rocks like yeah these rocks look look delicious but um but i thought you know if there was an animal like that and there'd be a predator like this type of animal that's not that's not a predator itself would need to be able to um see ya anya take it easy yeah take it easy we're gonna head out soon too and actually i've got to head out pretty soon too so so yeah he he hunts giant roaches yes there you go exactly and so he would need to kind of blend in, right? So his coloring would need to kind of blend in and um, and it would need to make sense in the environment, right? So I think that's like a, that's a, a thing you got to like really, you know, you've got to think about all that stuff. Like when you're doing it, like you want to, you want to, it'll give, uh, it'll give more of a story to your, to your, uh, to your work. Like when you think that way. So, um, okay, I'm going to darken this down. Like, you know, even this ro this roach, like, you know, that would be able to get around great on this terrain, right? Would be able to get around great on the terrain, would fit in, like, same thing. Wouldn't be, you know, that one, this, he would need to hide to get the roaches, so he needed to be that color. The roaches are actually even more like that dust, so it would just, like, you can imagine this, like, plopping down and, like, hiding its legs and, like, being totally hidden from anything, you know, just, just, like, that makes, like, perfect sense that it would, it would uh, look like that and be like that. So that's awesome. Yeah, I think that's great. That's the way you want to think about it, incorporating stuff into environments. That's why I like to do that on here when when we have the option, like in Magma, I like to have an environment and try to incorporate things in the environment. Okay. I'm going to put a couple of people standing next to this van out here or whatever. This kind of like vehicle. I'm going to put a couple of people standing out there. Just quick, like, really quick, like, indications of those people like that. Like, kind of imply a little bit of shadows. Yeah, nice, Nexus. That's cool. That was like a total like worker truck or whatever. I love that. It's awesome. I could put something on the back of this, like that kind of thing, like it's carrying stuff. You know, like that kind of thing. Like there's something on the back of that or whatever, you know, it's carrying stuff or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. That's cool. Love that. Let's do that. I want to, maybe I'll make this just a little bit like higher, higher up or whatever. So, like, I'm trying to think of what it would be carrying, like, you know, maybe make it taller. But I'm just keeping it like super abstract, but I might want to. If I'm changing the shape and that much, I might want to probably wouldn't come up that high. We just need to, it gets like when I'm zooming in this much, it's kind of getting a little pixelated, but this would be brought in a little bit. If it was like that. It starts to be hard to kind of, when it's that small, it would just be sort of relegated into the distance it probably is best to be to leave it more abstract right there it sort of fade yeah because i don't want to because the topography it kind of looks weird with the topography now but if i have a little bit of a trail behind it maybe that's not too bad but because i'm going to kind of head it your that direction that you're doing next us like over there but Some machinery in the back of it or some stuff that it's carrying you know that kind of thing put a third light on it too seeing in the dust storms go yeah.
Nice guys. Well, I've actually got a head. You guys can definitely keep working on this. This is awesome. It's working out great, honestly. Like, it's really cool. It was funny. Andy like jumped right in. Like when I was getting this set up, Andy jumped right in and like and was jumping on the canvas and right away started putting in one of those dune worms and stuff. It was really fun. Um, so you guys picked up on this. Oh, like basil. I love that skull underneath there. That's awesome. That's super cool. That skull is great. That's right. We forgot to do like the 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 shell of the uh, um, the shell of the uh, the spaceman. That's all right. You guys can add it. You guys can add it. This looks awesome though. This is so so good. Really fun. You guys got into the spirit of what I was saying, like getting animals and and creatures and stuff like that that feel like they fit in the environment and everything. That's really cool. So really good stuff, guys. Really fun. Really awesome. Yeah, everybody did great. It was good hanging out. And um, and yeah, thank you guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jet now. I've got a jet. Sorry, I've got a I've got to be somewhere by twelve. Um, but uh, but it was awesome. It was it was cool to hang out and and there is a lot of styles represented here too. I think that was really cool. And if you listen, if you guys have like if you guys have ideas, send them my way. Like if you guys have like suggestions or like things that you want to do or things that you want to work on, things that you want me to cover in the sessions too, I can work that in as well. Um, you know, feel free to to communicate that and, and we can uh we can start working on that like if you have very particular things like i might do um i might do next time i think i might do i did like those two environments i might have us all draw off of a reference like a like do like a portrait or do something like that off of a reference and and just riff on it and and have some fun with it um that might be a good change a change up um so i'm doing them once a month for me now but i i might be stepping that up actually i need to talk to solomon about it but i'm gonna um it's just my schedule at the end of this past year was a little bit or like towards the end of last year was a little bit busy um so it's still busy but i think i might be able to do i think i might want to do two so i'll talk to him about it though um and we'll we'll get all that worked out um uh but uh but yeah, guys, it's it's awesome. This is really really fun. And he'll let you know. He'll let you know all that stuff. We'll we'll figure out that scheduling and stuff because I got to work it out with him. Make sure all that's all that's working out. But thank you guys. Um, and Saul, if you're there, um, do you like do you have you have like an outro video and stuff like that? And I don't I don't know. It, I think Saul's still here. I believe so. Maybe not. But um, but I think there's like an outro video that he would typically play. I'm kind of he's teaching me to take over the stream. So it's a <laughs> so eventually I'll just be able to hop on the stream, just be able to kind of go on and do everything. And and at that point, too, like, uh, you know, um, I may be able to jump on, you know, at various times, too. And just, you know, I will want to probably plan it. But I'm just saying I, I might like it's just a little bit easier. I can hop right on, get in there like, it, you know. Um, Saul doesn't have to be involved in all that stuff. So we're working towards that so that I can just hop on and have a lot more, a lot more rapid fire. Right. So that, that, that's the other side of it that will allow me to kind of just be able to hop on and do it. And I can do it a little bit more often. So awesome. You guys, this was great. This was really fun. Thanks for, uh, for joining me in here. And, uh, and again, like I said, if you have questions about technique, if you have questions about different things, like we're just having fun talking and stuff like that. But if you have anything that you want me to cover or anything, you know, think about that and I can I cover that topic, you know, discuss it artistically and all that stuff and we can we can get it worked out. So awesome. Thank you, guys. You guys can continue on this. You can continue on it and uh, and keep rolling. But I'm going to head out and uh, and I'll see you guys next time. And, and just look, you know, just look, be on the lookout for that. Solomon, I'll let you guys know when I'm streaming next and we'll figure out that schedule and, and get you guys rocking and rolling. Anatomy. OK, interesting. OK, that's cool. Well, we could talk about that. You know what we could do is we like I was thinking about doing the um the portrait next time. And um okay, cool. So anatomy. Okay. So what we could do next time I'll be I'll, I'll could do a portrait and I can just give you like there's a lot I have a class on schoolism for um portraits that goes really deep into it. Um if anybody wants to check that out, uh, but it's it's that would be really involved to do it for it would be like very heavy like like to go even and i don't even go into it super deep in that class like i'm I'm using it as one of the topics but what i can do i it, what i can do is give you like an idea of the structures of the face and kind of like i think the best way to go about it would be uh, showing you guys how the how those mu not going over every individual muscle and all those types of things and expression and how expression works and all that stuff because that's a whole that's what my classes are. It's an expressive portrait painting in all different ways, like the expression, also like color and stuff like that. But, um, uh, but I think like going into it and 
and saying, here's where the anatomy leads you, like to this structural side. And then this is what you want to do with the structural side. I think that would, I think that would be a helpful way to go about it. And then how do you, you know, kind of the, like the way to simplify the, the anatomy that that's what I think would be helpful Like you simplify the anatomy and think of the structures and the forms and like turning them in space. Okay, cool. Let's do that next time. Let's, let's talk about that next time. That'd be a really great one to do. And um, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. So I'll talk a little bit about that next time. And then we'll do a portrait um, in, in regards to that. And it'll, 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 that'll be great. That'll be really fun. Like a lot, maybe I should take that format too. You guys can let me know, like have a little bit of a lesson up front, like a little bit. I've been kind of doing that. And then have a little lesson and then and then put it to use right away. Maybe that's the best way to go about it, I think. Um, you know, anyways, yeah, feel free to give me feedback. Give Solomon feedback, you know, let him know. And we'll we'll start building that stuff up. Um, but this is fun, guys. I mean, sometimes I've got to just, like, pop in and have fun like this. Like, you got to do it sometimes, you know. So can't all be serious, right? <laughs> okay, good. Rhea, sounds great. Okay, awesome. That's great. That's really cool. All right, cool. Well, thanks, guys, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. And uh, like I said, if you have any other ideas, that's a great one. So we'll do that next time. And um, and if you have any other ideas, let Saul know or let me know, or or um, and then we'll get it uh, get it worked in. So thank you, guys. Take it easy. Have a good rest of the day. You guys feel free to keep plowing away on this canvas. If you want to add stuff, go for it. You know, feel free. So thanks, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>